Sega. When I was thinking about what people remember fondly about the game, at the time, I think it was enjoying the thrills and getting the timing right when they played it. I think enjoying the game world and experiencing the fantasy world of Disney were a big part of it, too. What they'll see in the 2013 version will be nothing like the old game in some sense, but I'm hoping that players can relive the same emotions when they play it. It's taking something that was very iconic in the 16-bit era and thinking, well, how can we take something that was really special, really worked well, was one of the most iconic games of its time, and actually try and explore that in new ways with the technology. And we have to be very mindful of um, what made the original so successful and why people loved it, and, uh, and, and try and bring that forward without it being just, you know, literally a one-for-one -one remake. There were a lot of unique games at the time in terms of graphics or the general atmosphere of the game. Even among those, this game made an impression that still lasts, and now it's being remade. The fact that we're bringing back something nostalgic that people remember fondly as a game they enjoyed years ago, to me, is the epitome of Disney. The original game, it just had a lot going for it. I think even the name Castle of Illusion was something cool, you know, straight away Castle of Illusion says, oh, what's that? Oh, what's inside that castle? And then you've got Mickey Mouse, biggest character in the world, so straight away you're like, oh, that's awesome, we're going to play Mickey Mouse through this Castle of Illusion. And it innovated on all levels, camera, control, platforming, and I think the core gamers absolutely loved it. So that in essence, it's a very simple platformer, but it grabs the magic of Disney, the magic of Mickey. It was my first time making a game, so I came up with ideas I thought might be interesting and things I thought would help flesh out the fantasy world without being hesitant about how difficult or unconventional they might be. In that sense, I think that helped us make a unique game. First, the animation was unique in that it used a remarkable number of frames in the animation for its time. We tried to use as many techniques from film animation as we could. Also, we put a lot of energy into the backgrounds for its time, packing in as much as we could given the memory constraints. I think both efforts paid off in terms of the game's graphic quality. A Disney animation is always moving from beginning to end. At the time we were making our game, if you didn't do something on the controller, nothing would move at all. So we thought, if we want to bring Disney animations to life, we need things moving on the screen all the time. These days you see it in almost all games, but at the time, we were one of the first games where your character would move even when you're not doing anything. The amount of memory or VRAM that we had to work with at the time was really tiny. You need memory to make good, rich animations. But the way VRAM had been used prior to that point wasn't very well suited for animations like that. So we worked with the programmers to rebuild the system from the ground up to let us focus more on the animations. Once we got the animations where we wanted them, we adjusted the character's movements pixel by pixel for a better feel when the player controls him. When we were told to make a Mickey Mouse game, I didn't want to make a game that was just about Mickey being cute. Our focus was on how we could include the Disney world view from their classic movies. So rather than Mickey Mouse alone, we drew inspiration from the various classic movies that Disney's produced. Games at the time were 8-bit or 16-bit, so there wasn't really a lot of room to work with. Most people in the industry weren't putting a lot of work into graphics or creating animations that conveyed a lot of character emotion. When we watched Disney movies and Mickey, it seemed like such a waste to take the fluid animations and beautiful backgrounds and turn them into pixelated graphics. So I think we put a lot more work into the graphics than any other title at the time. When we were making the Dragon Balls for the candy stage, we couldn't figure out what to use for the dragon's body. Someone from Sega's US office sent us some licorice as a suggestion. Most of the team hated it, but I couldn't stop eating it. I was holding one of the hollow ones in my mouth and breathing through it like a straw as I worked and ended up filling the whole room with the smell. When we were working on this game, I was focused on animations and recreating the world of Disney. And now, modern technology can deliver Disney visuals directly and cinematically rather than via blocky pixel graphics. The new game will be able to recreate the world of Disney movies on a level that we weren't able to reach. The world the game creates, and the game itself as well, will be that much closer to the world you see in the movies. People will be able to enjoy that as they play. 
The original game had this, and it's there in the remake as well. The essence of Disney, a positive world of dreams, peace, and imagination. It's the epitome of Disney, and I hope everyone enjoys that in the new game, too. We're very fortunate to be still working with the original producer of the game. Um, I don't think many other studios have ever had that opportunity. Sega actually approached us about this a number of times, so I've seen prototypes and ideas from other developers as well. But with SSA's prototype, it took me back to when I was working on the original game. It reminded me of things I was feeling at the time, or what was going through my head as I was working on it. And that's a wonderful thing, and it made me really want to work with them. But the prototype we delivered was actually to be presented to the producer of the original game. There is nothing like that as a goal to motivate a team and then to fly a lot of that team over to Japan and present live. Um, I myself was quite nervous. I've heard that the producer was very tough, very talented. She did the original game. We were there in the meeting, everything was quiet. She walks in, everybody's very nervous. It went phenomenally well. She was happy, she was laughing, she enjoyed what we did to Mickey. For us to change the mechanics, we have to be very cautious. We can't steer too far away from the feel of Mickey, and we can't go too, too retro, because there were technology constraints in those days on what you could do with Mickey. So we've analyzed the feel of Mickey, the jump heights, the inertia, the, the turn the, 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 on the edge of a cliff, and we've been able to just knock it out of the park, all the animations. And now we're challenged by the feel of Mickey. So we feel we can move from the retro to retro plus. We can do more of what I think the gamers in those days would have loved because of our technology. It's more lifelike, it's more, it's more fun. The lighting effects are taken into the account, the candlelight in the background. So all of a sudden the personality, the core pillar of the game, Mickey, is brought to life. And that's something that we really want to do with Castle of Illusion, is try and modernize Mickey, but put him in the context of what we had before in the original game. Um, and our challenge then is to try and improve the animations, the look and feel of Mickey, um, the characters around Mickey, the, uh, the environments that he's in, and, and even the music score is, is a massive part of that whole Disney package. Primarily, we're able to do a lot more with the sound effects, the mixing, um, the environmental effects. I mean, these are all things that we come to expect without realizing it. If a fan of the original picks up and plays the new Castle of Illusion, I think they're going to be really surprised. I think they're going to feel like this is Castle of Illusion, and I think we've, we've played a few little tricks on them along the way. And I think if, if they're looking out for those, those things that they remember, they're going to see them and a few extra as well. That's the thing I'm most nervous about. When people who've played the game before get their hands on the new game, what will they think? I can't wait to find out. It's expressed in a completely different way, but the essence is the same. So I hope the enjoyment they experience from it is the same.